Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Art of Creation Homestead. My name is Jason. I'm outside. We're actually going to be cooking today, obviously, by the video title, but I'm outside because it's the time of year where we get to cook from what we grow. And as you can see here, we got some beautiful Swiss chard. Uh, this is our favorite kind of Swiss chard. It's called Oriole or Orange Variety, and it's awesome. Look at it. It's growing really well it's in this green stalk. Um, it handles the heat really well, so it's kind of it's our favorite one. And you can use these stems. So we're going to be picking a lot of this Swiss chard to take it inside for Angela K to use. And it's very simple. Honestly, you just take it and just pop it off. Maybe easier with because with uh, some scissors or a knife or something. But you can just pop it with your hand. It does get a little stringy out there, so I might go and get some scissors. But we're just going to pick everything that needs picking. Okay? Everything that needs to come off there, we're going we're to get it that way for the health of the plant. It's just better for the whole plant that way. And if it's something we can't use, then um, we'll, it'll just go to the chickens. No big deal. But we'll pick everything we can pick for the health of the plant. Now let me show you, this is why we do what we do. This is so awesome right here. This, oh, don't want to drop it all. Don't want to lose the harvest. But it's a beautiful, beautiful piece of Swiss chard. Oh, that can go to the chickens. Look at this right here. Look how big that is. What a beautiful piece of chard. Again, we have some here that uh, won't that won't be good for us to eat, but uh, they'll just go to the chickens. Now, I want to show you something that's very important to me. This right here, see that? There's a little bitty bug on this spine of shard. Some people might get weirded out, weirded out by that. Okay, and okay, I get it. It's a bug. You don't want to eat a bug. Granted, you probably have before. All right, but all I do want to tell you is that washes off. It's okay. You see a little bug bite, a little hole in the leaf. It's okay. You just cut around it. It'll be fine. Wash it off. I promise you, if you go to the store, you're kidding yourself if you think worse hasn't been on the the leaves of greens that's inside the store. Whether it be a chemical or whether it be a bug or an animal, <laughs> worse has been on it. Wash it off. It'll be okay. It's good for you. All right, God made it this way. It ain't gonna hurt you. All right, so don't don't get weirded out by a few bugs. It'll be okay. Now we've got our Swiss chard all washed up. It's thinking beautiful, isn't it? Gosh. And it's gorgeous. Yeah. And it, when you're using Swiss chard, you can use the stems. They're very, they cook up very tender, and they're delicious. Yeah. So you, but you want to chop those up and put those in first because they're going to take longer than the leaves. And that makes good sense. That's good thinking, honestly, because the leaves ain't going to take that long. The leaves are going to take no time, yeah. just like any green. But they're thick. They're but much thicker, obviously. Basically, you chop the leaves up, kind of like you would chop celery. It's It has a very similar texture to Stingy celery. Me. Stingy me. Yeah. You said leaves, I think. I'm sorry. I think. Maybe I listened wrong. I'm a uh, man, so who knows? <laughs> With the stalks, you chop them up similar to celery. Yeah. And they have a texture very similar to celery. Yeah. So you want to treat them like you would celery. Interesting. And like I've got my Italian sausage because that's that's where you want to start with is your Italian sausage. I'm using Italian sausage. First off, did you tell them what I'm making? Nope. Okay. I guess I need to tell you what I'm making. I'm making some pasta with Italian sausage and Swiss chard with a red pepper, roasted red pepper cream sauce. So I've got my Italian sausage going. I'm using mild, you can use spicy. If you don't have Italian sausage, you could use chicken in this or ground turkey. I would not recommend ground beef. <laughs> now I'm just gonna cut this up. See, it cuts very similar yeah. to celery. <laughs> Look at this beautiful cutting board. It was a gift from Jason for our anniversary. It was handmade. Shout out Grain Woods and Grain Woods off of Etsy. Uh, another Ukrainian company. Uh, really good, really really good cutting board. Um, check them out. It might take you a little bit to get it, but it's a it's actually, worth it. It's not a bad price for a handmade uh, cutting board of this magnitude. It's really good. And Jason will have to come over here and show you what he had put on it. They'll customize it. It says Angela K's Kitchen. So just a little something there. 
Plus, you might appreciate it. Now we're going to take our stems over and add it to our sausage. Now we're just going to let this saute in with our sausage until they're nice and tender. And then I'll show you what we do next. Now I'm just giving the leaves of the chard a, just a rough chop because this is going to wilt down significantly so it doesn't matter if it's perfect. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's, perfect, if it's perfectly dry, it doesn't matter no. if it's perfectly cut, just give it in there. Yeah. Now our sausage and our stems are cooking together. The stems are getting nice and tender, but we want to add some more flavor. So I'm adding just a little round of our garlic cake butter. Looks like a slice of banana. <laughs> that has some mold on it. <laughs> yeah. You can see the green real well on that. But, but yeah. I just want to add just a little bit of, just a little hint of flavor in there. You don't want to overpower because yeah. garlic cake butter can overpower very easily. Yeah. This will just add just a little something something. Now my stems are all nice and tender and my sausage is, is done so I'm going to add my chart in there. Now it's going to look like a lot but it's going to wilt down yep. to a little. Look at our greens always are just mostly water content and so they, they wilt down a lot once they start getting hot. It's not going to take no time for this to wilt down. Sure might not wilt down as much as other, as other greens but it's still going to wilt down a lot. If you don't have chard, you don't like chard, you can use spinach or kale or anything like that. Yeah. But chard has a flavor of its own. Yep. It's going to taste different than either of those. Um, it's very earthy. If you've never had it, it's very earthy. Um, I personally love the flavor of it. If you don't like earthy flavors, you may not like it, so you may want to go with spinach or something more mild. But if you can find it, give it a shot. Yes. While you do have salted butter in there and the sausage, you still want to add a little salt because Swiss chard does not come off the plant season. Salt and pepper to taste. Always remember that. Yes. Okay, if it's going to be roasted red pepper cream sauce, then you need roasted red peppers, but you need to puree them. So, in here I have two very large roasted red peppers. Yeah. They, you can just get them in a jar. It depends on how big your peppers are that come out of your jar, how many you'll need. I would say as big as those are, we'll probably only need two. Well, now, if you get a jar of them that may be a little small, you might need three or four. Yeah. Honestly, so just kind of... Just kind of eyeball can, can it. Can you hold that one of them up, Sean, what, what big one of them was? Well, I ripped you it. Chopped so them, you already mixed I them ripped up. it. Okay. But see... They, they were That's huge. half of one. That, right. That's about a third of one. third of one, okay. So that gives you a good, a good eyeball, okay. So I'm just gonna use a mini chopper that come with my immersion blender. You can use anything you have. You can use a food processor, a mini chopper, a blender. Yep, anything absolutely. that will puree it. Yep. See, now you have a nice roasted red pepper puree. Yep, looks good. If you don't like those blackened bits, you can pull that off before you do this. I personally love it. Yeah, it adds good flavor. Now we're going to build our sauce around the, around our meat and veggies. We've already cooked about 12 ounces of penne pasta in some nice salted water. Pull out about three-fourths of a cup of starchy cooking liquid right before you dump it because you may need it or you may not. Just good to have in case you need something yes. to help with the sauce. You can use any cut you want of pasta. I don't really know that spaghetti would go good here. Probably any like tube shaped pasta yeah. or cork corkscrew or anything like that would yeah. work. Now we are going to add, I'm just eyeballing it, probably about a cup and a half of heavy cream. It's up to you how how creamy you want it, basically. But you want you want it creamy because you got to remember remember your pasta is going to absorb a lot of sauce. Yeah, that's true. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my roasted red pepper puree. It smells so good, but I love roasted red peppers. Yeah. Now we'll just mix that in. And see, it's such a beautiful color. Yeah. 
Looks good. Adds a really nice color and a really nice flavor to this cream sauce. Now, because the cream cut down on your seasoning, you'll want to add a little bit more salt and pepper. That's a good point. A lot of times cream, you don't think about it, but it's it's not salty. It's going it's got it's a sweet it's yes. a sweet product. So yes. it will affect your 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 saltiness. And this I have a feeling that this is going to take on some pepper. <laughs> yeah, normally cream and sausage both can handle some pepper. Yes. And you got both elements. So now we're going to add probably about three fourths of a cup of Parmesan cheese, just to help with the creamy aspect and also add some nice saltiness. Yeah. That will go really well with the chard. Yeah, that'd be a good flavor. Honestly, chard's good. But like things like this are a really good way to sneak in some greens. Yes, definitely. It honestly is. Because if you don't think you don't like chard, this is a good way to use it. Yeah, kind of introduce yourself to yep. it. Yep. Now we'll taste for seasoning. It's just a tiny sprinkle more salt, but it needs some more pepper, definitely. Now we are going to throw it in our pasta. Like I said, I'm using penne. I like something with a tube in it for something like this so that the sauce goes all up in that tube yeah it it just works <laughs> this is about 12 ounces if you are feeding more people <laughs> you can add more but just make sure you add more cream and, and more roasted you go peppers bigger sauce. to your sauce in a bigger pot yes <laughs> yes <laughs> definitely now we're just going to fold this in and see if it if it's a little dry then you'll want to add some pasta water or some more cream now we have a small handful of fresh basil leaves and i'm just going to tear them in and let them kind of wilt you can chop them i usually prefer to tear basil because basil bruises very easily the more you chop it the more it, the more it bruises and the more it bruises it brings out can bring out some bitter tannins in it and it's not going to be as pleasant it's not going to taste as fresh mm. so i i most of the time choose to tear it and just do it simple this is just very simple yes you just will let it wilt in just a little bit yes you're just you want to add it when your pasta is pretty much right at done and your your heat is very low in your skillet or turned off yep. and just let it just slightly wilt into your pasta it's just going to add an extra layer of flavor if you don't like fresh basil you can leave that out but i'm telling you it's going to make all the difference because the minute that hit the heat you can smell that basil i'm going to add just a little more sprinkle of parmesan cheese and then you can add more on your plate but I think we're, we'll call that meat. Hey, look here. This The sauce is not a really thick, heavy sauce, okay? So don't expect that. It's not like a spaghetti sauce. It's, it should be a light cream sauce. It's not like it's going to be glopping all over the place. All right, so don't expect that. What you can expect is a beautiful, beautiful pasta. Yeah, it's stinking amazing. Holy heck. And that's what happens when the battery dies on your camera at an inopportune time. But that's a delicious dish. So wonderful, so flavorful. It's a great way to use fresh basil, fresh chard, garlic butter, or garlic scape butter. All three things, all three are things that we produced here. Putting the garlic scapes, the Swiss chard, the basil. We would grew all those here, and Angela made the butter here. So it's such a wonderful way to use fresh ingredients that you grew yourself. So thank you guys so much for watching. We do appreciate it. My name is Jason. That's Marlon. Her name is Angela Kay. This is our recreation homestead. We love y'all. God bless you and goodbye.